is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 6.01. I'm Will Puckett. And I'm Madison Pargram. Well, thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. And if you're going to do anything outside today, you're going to want to ditch the sleeves <laughs> and the pants. You're going to want shorts and no shirt almost. It's I, it's still, I mean, it's hot. Just just put your <gasps> June and July clothes back on, your flip-flops. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, let's bring in meteorologist Kelly McShane this morning. And, Kelly, as I sit here trying to remain calm, the <laughs> fall's not showing its head yet. I have to remember that spring lasted well into the summer months. Yeah, it did. So it seems like summer's just trying to play catch up and get its time in here in the mountains. But overall, it is not letting go and it is relentless and it is here in full force for the next few days. Overall, those temperatures starting off this morning, we're starting off definitely on the warm side, upper 60s to lower 70s. So no need for a jacket as you head out. It may feel a little bit humid as well. Over into Whitesburg. Good morning to you folks in Letcher County. Looking at a calm scene on downtown Main Street, but overall, that's all we're really dealing with. It's a nice calm start, but a warm start to the day. Not too much fog out there, however, into Harlan, Bell, Whitley, a little bit into Pulaski County, as well as Laurel County. We're seeing some reduced visibility, so be very careful traveling along into the Cumberland Valley, but overall, not a widespread issue this morning, and I will have those details on the temperatures we will see this week, including a little bit of a cool down here in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Kelly. Well, the city of Prestonsburg in Floyd County was selected to receive an $185,000 grant to study and develop the Leviza and Russell Forks River as a Blue Water Trail. WYMT's Marianne Fletcher caught up with Prestonsburg officials to learn more about the upcoming tourism. A river tying eastern Kentucky cities together. We're talking about 100 miles from Elkhorn City to Louisa. That's big. Recently, the city of Prestonsburg received a $185,000 grant to study the route and create docks along the way. We don't really need a design, we really need a plan. We just need to know where we can put them at. Mayor Les Stapleton says one of the most untapped tourism resources we have is this river. A good friend of mine, Gerald Clark, and I've got a picture I'm going to post on my Facebook page. He caught a huge walleye. They hope to transform small economic drives into a bigger local money maker. If people are on the water, that's not a dollar directly, but everybody eats, everybody shops, everybody wants something to do once they get off the water. Tourism director Samantha Johnson says from the rapids close to Elkhorn City to downtown Prestonsburg's calm waters. You truly have something for everyone and what a great way for people to see all of Eastern Kentucky. And while these docks will not pop up overnight. Knowing that it's not going to be immediate, so sometimes we have to be patient and know that good things take time. Keeping the economy flowing. In Floyd County, Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. Prestonsburg Mayor Les Stapleton says he hopes to put the plan into action soon. And for some of you, this may be every day, but yesterday was National Coffee Day. Many people here in Hazard celebrated by heading to a local coffee truck here in town. Vagabond C Cafe is owned by a local husband and wife and has been in business for a little more than one year. They make frequent stops around the area to sell their delicious coffee and food. We both had kind of normal jobs before this and risk it all to kind of do our dream and yeah, we're just blessed to be able to do that. Grateful for the area. The people in Hazard are the best. Like we, like I said, we've been around the whole state, but it, we're just like so nice to come home and it's been really welcoming. You can check out where they're going to be next by visiting their Facebook page, Vagabond Cafe. Well, when you work with people for years, you tend to grow close, sort of like a family. Well, when one business opened up more than 35 years ago, it created a bond between employees that is yet to be broken. And after many of them went their separate ways, they did not think they would be all get to be able to get back together again. But they all changed when one woman made a wish. WMT's Lauren McCourt explains. No, this is not your average high school reunion, but it's close. It's actually a 1984 Walmart employee reunion. We've cried together, laughed together, played together. So, yeah, you grow close. When Walmart first opened in Whitesburg, Vicki Adams was one of their very first employees. I just applied for the job and I got it and I helped them with the setup of the store. Little did she know, this job would be a sweet memory she continues to hold on to. They were always there for me. 
through thick and through thin. Several years ago, Vicki was diagnosed with cancer, and here recently, the doctor said there's not really anything else they could do. I was told that it's metastatic uterine cancer, so it will just keep spreading throughout my body. Unsure of how much longer she has left, Vicki had one last wish. So my last wish was to have a Walmart reunion with my Walmart family. And thanks to a few of her friends, that wish was granted. They just made my wish come true. Former employees traveling from as far as Minnesota to reunite with their co-workers. I couldn't let her down. I had to be here. And to celebrate the wonderful woman Vicki Adams is. She's a role model, actually. She's what, she's what you want to be. Many people go to Walmart searching for the best deals. I just, I just... I, I'm just so blessed. But the friendships found at this shopping center are priceless. In Letcher County, Lauren McCourt, WIMT Mountain News. Now, Adam said she never imagined this many people would show up, but she is so grateful many of them were able to make it. Morgan Hall was a well-loved teacher at Jones Fork Elementary in Knott County. She died during childbirth back in July. And since then, her aunt launched Morgan Mission, a fundraiser to pro provide new math and reading programs for students at Jones Fork Elementary, programs Morgan worked to get before she died. It's really a big honor just to be able to update um, in Morgan's name and and to let the people who have donated know that we're well on the on our way to being able to receive the, the programs that Morgan wanted. Morgan Hall's family and the community raised $7,000 to get the new programs. Saturday, people hit the dance floor for Folk and Square dancing at Green Hill Therapy in Louisville. The hoedown on the hill raises money to support programs for kids with special needs. The event makes sure that kids can participate in the program even if their families can't pay. Organizers set a goal to raise $125,000 for the therapies through the event. The amount raised has not been released at this time. One Lexington special needs daycare is trying to connect family members of kids with disabilities to the resources they need. That's why the Kids Club hosted its first special needs expo. With more than 50 exhibits, families could find everything from support groups to different types of therapy programs, all available in the Bluegrass area. We are thrilled that there are smiles here, that there are connections here, and that we believe differences are going to be made in families' lives because they attended here today. Organizers say the Kids Club plans to continue hosting the event for years to come. Sunday was a free day at Kentucky Kingdom for all active duty police officers, firefighters, medics, and their families, giving back some of the laughter, time, and memories they have sacrificed for their communities. New Hope Fire Department Lieutenant Jonathan Matheny says he knows every time he walks out the door for work, he's walking away from moments with his family and leaving them with uncertainty. It's kind of scary not knowing whether or not he's going to come home, but we hope for the best that he will come home every time he has to leave. For one day, the only worry for many of them was which ride was next. It was also Hurricane Bay's last open weekend before the park's new Hall of Scream att attraction Friday. In a unique tribute in Ohio, a baby born who had to have open heart surgery is honored with a corn maze. Helena Batigo has that. Looking at this happy family of five today. <laughs> You'd never know the hardships they faced just months ago when baby Ruth came into the world. I mean, you don't know your strength until you're tested. <laughs> Ruth was born with a critical congenital heart defect, leaving her with little oxygen and a desperate fight to survive. At just one month old, she had open heart surgery. The recovery period, long and uncertain. They didn't know if there would be brain damage. They didn't know if there would be any long-term def you know, deficits. But this tiny warrior made a comeback, and it's being celebrated at Burwinkle Farms in Ross Township for everyone to see. I was honored and so glad that they chose to have Ruth as the center of attention for the fall festivities here. Baby Ruth Heart Warrior is the theme for this giant corn maze, the design going on for acres. Bobby Berwinkle says the decision to make it was a no-brainer, and it took him only an hour to create. I mean, this is the year for Ruth. I mean, we're so blessed to have her with us this year. Um. 
a blessing so many are thankful for. With the support of our family and friends and the community, uh, we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. And they gave her the strength that she needed to get through and also our family. A reminder of the happy ending that came out of such a scary situation. Baby Ruth's strength at the heart of this farm and the community. Yesterday was a very warm day here in the mountains and we are starting off on the warm side as we head into your Monday morning as well. Temperatures as you wake up, we're looking at these 60s and 70s, so you won't need a jacket as you step out this morning. It may feel a little bit warm and even a little bit humid as you walk outside, but overall we're seeing those 60s and 70s this morning and we had clear skies overnight, so some fog has been able to settle into the valley regions, but overall we're not looking at widespread issues, but just take it easy if you are traveling along into the Cumberland Valley region. However, had, as we head into this afternoon, we'll see partly cloudy skies with a stray chance of rain, but the big story is the temperatures as they will be in those low to mid 90s heading into this afternoon. And I'll let you know the high temperatures for the rest of the week, including a bit of a cool down here in just a little bit. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you for joining Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Indiana health officials confirmed the state's first vaping related death earlier this month. Now one victim's father is sharing his daughter's story. And scientists in New York are trying to figure out if cannabis can help children with autism. We'll have the details. 